Hello, hello, hello. We're gonna talk about dot products today. So remember a couple days ago when I said, if you wanna add and subtract vectors, you just add and subtract their components. And if you wanna multiply a vector by a scalar, you just distribute to the components of the vector. And then I said, if you wanna multiply two vectors, you can't, I lied, just a little bit. You can't technically multiply, multiply vectors in the strict sense of the word, but you can create a specialized product of vectors. Um, and that is called the dot product. So you can do something called finding the dot product to two vectors. It has a couple different useful applications and a formula that we use it a lot for. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So simply put, the dot product of two vectors is the sum of the products of the respective components of the vectors. And so really what that means is, is if you have u that's u1, u2, in V, that's V1, V2, or if you have three components, that works too. It's just U1, V1 plus U2, V2. You multiply the first component times the first component, second chi the second, and add them together. That's it. So if you're multiplying numbers and then adding numbers, do you see any commas on the right-hand side? Do you see swiper? No, you're right, there are no commas. Did you like that throwback to Dora? If you haven't watched the Dora the Explorer movie, you should definitely watch it, the newest one. It's honestly quite hilarious. So take some time, do that, you got time. So does the dot product yield a vector or a scalar? Well, since there aren't any commas or any brackets on that right-hand side, it is, you guessed it, a scalar. A dot product takes two vectors, dots them, and then turns them into a number. So strictly speaking, the dot product does not have any visual meaning. If you want to say, well, what, what, what does that number mean? Eh, not really anything I can explain in a simple sense. It's just an operation on vectors that we use often enough to give it a name. I'm recording this at school, hence the bells. Now, there are properties of the dot product. And in fact, since the dot product is kind of like a product, it allows for the commutative and the distributive property, just like multiplication would in you know regular operations. So u dot v is the same as v dot u, u dotted with v plus w, you can distribute the u and do u dot v plus u dot w. Um, you can multiply by a constant, a zero vector dotted with any other vector is gonna just give you another zero vector. And v dot v is the magnitude of v squared. This one I wanna prove. So how can I prove that that's true? Well, let's say v is v1, v2, and I'm gonna dot it with v1, v2. When I dot those, it's first times first, v1 times v1, which is v1 squared, plus second times second, v2 times itself squared. Well, I just found the sum of the squares of the components. There's just no square root sign on it, which is why this is the same as the magnitude of v squared, because the magnitude of v would be the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared squared. Okay. All right, so now given these two vectors, calculate each of the following. So u is 2, negative 2, 5. w is 4, 8, negative 7. We're going to calculate each of the following. So if you feel like you know what you're doing, feel free to go ahead and then scrub through this video to see if you were correct. So u dot w is 2, negative 2, 5, dotted with 4, 8, negative seven. And so two times four is eight. Negative two times eight is negative 16. Five times negative seven is negative 35. So that's gonna be a grand total, I think, of negative 43. Okay, that's just what I get. U dot U, well, U dot U is just two times two plus negative two times negative two plus five times five. So it's really 25 plus eight, which is what, 33. U dot W, U, but there's no dot between that parenthesis and the U, that's important. So if I did U dot W, I already did that, that's negative 43. And then I have a U next to it. Oh, so now what I'm doing is I'm really multiplying the vector U times the constant negative 43. So this is just going to be negative 43 times regular multiplication to negative 2, 5, which gets me a bigger vector, which is going to be what? Negative 86 
positive 86, negative 215. Yeah, I think so. So be aware of when you think you're dotting and when you think you're multiplying. Uh, u dot 2w. Well, I'm going to use one of the properties up here that says if I have a constant sticking around, I can really multiply that by anything I want. I can multiply it at the end. I can multiply it before. So it's totally up to me. I'm going to think of this as 2 times u dot w because it said I can. And I already know u dot w. It's right above it. So this is going to be 2 times negative 43, which is negative 86. The magnitude of u dot w, so that would be the magnitude of negative 43, which there is an argument to be made here that the magnitude of negative 43 is 43. But when we use those double bars, we really mean the magnitude of a vector, and negative 43 isn't a vector. So really, I want you to understand that this is basically does not exist. That's just not something you do. And then u dot w dot u u dot w is negative 43 dotted with the vector u. No, I can't do that either. I can't dot a um, scalar with a vector. I can multiply a scalar and a vector, but I can't dot a scalar and a vector. So same thing here. This is really a nonsensical thing. Okay, I won't ever ask you to do it, but I want to make sure that you understand that you can multiply a vector by a scalar and you can dot two vectors. Okay, but you can't multiply two vectors and you can't dot a vector and a scalar.